Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we are looking at some source code released in the year 2000. It's one of those things, it's a commercial game, an implementation of Monopoly, uh, released by Hasbro back again in the year 2000. Uh, just uh, yesterday up on Reddit, this post came up, basically said, the full source code for Hasbro's Monopoly was released and I have to question the legality of this release. And then again, I also have to question, do I care? Because at this point in time, it's been 18 or 19 years since this code was written. It is of limited value in any way whatsoever, but I have no idea where their source code came from. I do not know the legality of it. I do not know if this is public domain. Given the fact that this is based on the game Monopoly, I almost guarantee you that it's not. But I also don't see any harm whatsoever of jumping into this source code. And if that changes, I will either take this video down or update that or whatever. But I view this one as almost harmless on every level whatsoever. Um, it was posted by a person named Mr. Toledo over on Twitter. It's a Mega Z uh, NZ download. So again, not the most legit of sources, but uh, it is this game that we were talking about here. So it was developed by Artex Studios. Um, and released by Maxsoft on the Mac and Infograms on Windows PCs. Obviously this is Monopoly that we all know and love. And that's actually the only reason why I actually viewed this as worth reporting on, I guess. Because one of the things that I think a lot of people really struggle with is artificial intelligence. And one of the ways that artificial intelligence is hard to grasp is the rules of the game. Now, every game from Quake to Far Cry to Go, every single one of them has a rule set. But but for established board games that we know and love, that rule set is somewhat more intuitive to us. So that's why being able to jump in and take a look at the source code for a game you already know can actually have some value. Plus, I also find it incredibly interesting to go back in time and see how things were implemented. Now, this is technically C++ source code. Oh, but it ain't. No, this is definitely not C++. Uh, this is better C. This is, so, sorry, C++ is a better C. So nothing's magic going on here. Uh, end user license, blah, blah, blah. And another thing I should keep in mind, and another reason why I didn't view this as being all that bad, is this is not a full release. This is not a piracy. This is literally just the source code. So you're not gonna be able to build this or run it. Um, you don't have the data files or the assets. Maybe if you grab the assets from you know, commercially owning the game, the source code could be of some use for you. But for the most part, this is 100% just for reference purposes. So I downloaded the zip file, extracted it out. It basically comes down to um, a bunch of folders, Artlib, uh, which seems to be the actual rendering library, the cross-platform rendering and UI library, sort of the equivalent of SDL or SFML. Uh, Bink, which was a video encoding tool from the days, uh, JPEG encoding library, uh, PC3D, this seems to be a direct draw layer um, and 3D layer. Uh, for Windows PCs, and then Zlib, which we all know and love for the compression library, but the heart of the game actually is here in Monopoly. And if you want to go through the source, as obvious, as sorry, as always with um, C++ files, you probably want to locate main. And main is ultimately, in predictably enough, main.cpp. And what you're looking for ultimately is the game loop. And the game loop is really quite simple. Um, it's just kind of a standard message pump. It looks for uh, messages from the system uh, via the call to process UI message. Uh, and then it just kind of keeps running. And then when it gets in there, it calls display tick actions. And display tick actions, you come in here, that is available in display.cpp. And you'll see display.tick actions is again, another series of function calls. This is, tick actions is theoretically called at the, the hertz or the frame rate the game is running at. So it's trying to get 60 frames per second. And each run, the iteration through the loop we're going to basically call uh, UD board tick actions UDI bar tick actions UD pieces tick action and sound tick actions um, and that's kind of it and then update and display it so you don't want to just kind of keep drilling down deeper and deeper and deeper into these functions as you go and I think these are all actually in the same method let's bring up the header file and find out but you'll notice something when we're going through here there are no classes no nothing like that everything here is old school um, straight out C, uh, the way things used to be. Uh, so I don't know that there's a whole lot you're going to learn from this source code, but where I did find it very, very interesting is when you dig into the AI, AI.cpp, uh, you start getting into board rules. You can see how it's weighting each individual value. So as we know, for example, boardwalk is rated at 39. 
37 on park play. So it's applying weights to each individual uh, value, so average landing frequency for each particular piece. So you can see some of the, the math or the algorithms behind for calculating how often boards will actually be hit. Um, and then just kind of, you can just sort of come in here and see how the AI is set up and how the AI is going to calculate and figure various different things out, which is, I think the part of it that I found most interesting. Now, the part that is hilarious is just how old school some of this is. Like we were talking huge files. I think this is a 250 kilobyte CPP file. And then it's also broken down into, so if you got trading logic, it's broken down here in AI underscore trade. Um, and this is the, the rule sets that will help determine if the, the AI will trade with the player. And this is where I actually saw value in going through this code. There's not a lot of commercial code out there, especially for board games, showing the logic that was used behind the scenes. That's why I ultimately decided to share this. Now, I'm not gonna give you a direct link to the download itself because again, I'm not 100% certain where this source code came from. So I'm just going to link you back to Mr. Toledo here. And another reason I'm linking you to Mr. Toledo is actually, after getting the link to this code, I kind of went through his channel and there's some really interesting stuff either here or relinked. It's lost prototypes, it's um, tools from old games. And then again, MechWarrior 4 is actually one of my favorite games ever. And here you can see it like a screenshot of how the inside tools worked for creating games in MechWarrior. So it's just kind of a mishmash of the history of game development, game design, and so on. So there's some very interesting things in his channel that are definitely worth checking out. Out. And frankly, he's kind of a smallish channel and he's, he's actually doing a lot of retweets from other uh, very interesting channels here as well. So I, I figured I, I would just link to him. I will link to this tweet specifically. So if you want to download the source code yourself, it's like a 20, 25 megabyte zip file. And again, the style of it is people just don't code that way anymore. It would be kind of a bit of a maintenance nightmare. And the part I actually found really interesting is you can tell we were in a world before GitHub. Let me just bring back up the main.cpp. And this is something that we used to always do is we'd basically do our change log or our iteration log at the top in the comments. So you see here, this is kind of like what you would see in GitHub commits, but in the old school way. So each time you came doing through and did a revision, you'd say who did it, what date, and so on in the comments. I haven't seen this done in decades and there's a good reason for that. Uh, but again, it, it's kind of just of historical interest and like I said some of the AI stuff in here uh, like the trading and just AI in general is interesting for sure like that there's not a lot of examples out there so I decided to go ahead and share this again this is a totally niche video on a totally niche subject so I'll be interested to hear are you guys interested in source code stuff I've done a couple of source code related releases in the past but again this is 18 year old code in a way that is not really that interesting. But again, the logic behind something like Monopoly doesn't really change over time. So you can learn some stuff by gleaning through this, or at least you can just kill a couple of hours. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.